All right, we're here with Key on Sports. Vince McKee alongside Ruben Rodriguez in my alma mater, North Olmstead. For me, it's been 20 years. For this guy standing to my left, Joe Smith, it's been 25 years, I'm going to guess. Yes. And for Coach Monster, a few weeks. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to start with the man. Uh, this night is in honor of the alumni, but also the coach, Tim Smotzer, a, a teacher of mine. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, Vince. It's just so great to see you guys here at North Olmstead. What does it mean to be back? Well, uh, you know, I'm still teaching here, okay? okay. And Yeah, I, I teach here. I'm here every day. Uh, it's just a wonderful facility we have here. Uh, the kids are still great kids. I was the head coach here for 16 years. It's still the same type of people here. You know, people, I, I had a blast all 16 years coaching here and just seeing all these guys come back through all these years. I mean, we have guys from the state of Texas that flew in from this, and it's just, it's just such a great experience right now that I'm having. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I know for me, you know, coming back last year to do the first football game, just uh, what do you think about the renovations of the school and how far it's come in really just two quick years? Well, it's just first class, everything we, you know that they've done here. And uh, it doesn't surprise me. North Olmsted has always done things well. And, you know, we're just going to look to improve on the facilities as to how we're going to use them. And, Joe, what does it mean for you to be here? And i got to embarrass you real quick. Uh, way back when, my, my brother Don was a stack keeper for you guys. And the first game I ever saw, you were you were playing in it. This was the uh, winter of '94, Christmas break, heading into '95. So obviously, a lot of memories for you. What does it mean tonight? Uh, you know, North Olmsted's always going to be home for me. I, I grew up here, um, you know, 20 some years. I love this place. I love uh, everything about North Olmsted, the schools, the sports. You know, coaches like like coach here that have had such an impact on my life and. You know, it's it's just great to see the new building, the, the facilities, and see a lot of these guys here tonight. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great time. Hi guys, uh, good evening. Congratulations to the both of you. Uh, just give us a, talk a little bit about what you guys see in this uh, in the future for North Olmsted basketball moving forward. I know that you know, things aren't going as planned, but are they in good hands? Are they are they ready to go uh, moving forward uh, past uh, 2019? Well, Jason Frollo is very close to both of us, okay? Jason was an, my assistant for 10 years plus, okay? Uh, Jason is married. No, Joe is married to Jason's <laughs> sister, okay? So Joe's way bigger than I am, so I'm certainly not going to say anything bad about Coach Frollo, okay? But I just want to add about something I said earlier as far as when you saw Joe play in the winter of 94-95. That was the last time Joe ever shot a three-point shot in competitive <laughs> basketball. Okay? That's a fact. That's so, a fact. <laughs> no, but as far as getting back to your question, Coach Frollo does a wonderful job. You know, in a public school, you're dealt with the hand that you have, okay? Mm -hmm. yes. But he works on building a program, and things will only get better because he's such a quality coach and person. Listen, and one quick thing. The both, for the both of you guys, and, uh, and on behalf of our, our guys here at Keon Sports, thank you guys for being the kind of uh, gentleman that you were and you still are, you're teaching still, um, just to give the, the young kids uh, something to look forward to and, and, and mold them into the men that they are. Thank you, both of you. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, and if I could touch on that, thank you for choosing us to do this game. I had a drop tip a guy from WKNR outside just now. You know, he's trying to get in. So thank you. Well, you know, you got a lot of people here to see you. We want you to mingle. We want you to have fun. Okay, but, uh, you know, just kind of final words. A lot of people are going to listen to this, knock on wood. Um, what is your message to them about this night and North Olmstead and all the memories? If you could leave them with one, you know, outstanding memory that you have, what would it be to kind of wrap it all up for you? It's all about relationships. Whether you're involved, you know, in the classroom or in the court or on the field, it's all about relationships and just treating everybody well and doing the best you can at what you do. It's not what you do, but how you do things. Okay, and I think people and parents, kids, everybody kind of lose sight of that. Okay, just do the best you can. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, he, he, he helped mold me into the man I am today, so I agree 100%. If, if anything that myself and these guys here tonight learn from him, it's, it's two things you control, effort and attitude, and if you do it the right way, that's all that matters. So, All right, guys, thank you. And can I just say that Joe Smith is the most American name I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> Live game. It's made up. Yeah. <laughs> Go. Go right, have thanks, fun, and thanks. we'll catch you at halftime, right, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Welcome in, everybody, to the Keon Sports Podcast Game of the Week. Finally, we are in North Nolson, Ohio. In a battle, the Eagles host the Valley Forward Patriots. Which team will get their first win? We will all find out tonight 
I am Vince McKee. Joining me, the best color man in the business. My wife calls him Roman. You know him, Ruben Rodriguez. Hey guys, how's everybody out there, Vince? Uh, we got a loud crowd here tonight. It's alumni night. It's a special night for the folks here in North Olmsted. As they honor their old coach, Mr. Tim Schmatzer. We got a team here, like you said, though, both of them looking for their first win. It's a great atmosphere out here tonight. It looks like it's going to be a really fun night, Vince. Absolutely. You know, it's Christmas break. There's no homework. Kids are out having fun. What a better place to be than this one. So tonight again, one team, Ruben, gets their first win. We just saw a buzzer beater, Valley Forge, hit a three to win it at the buzzer just now in the JV game. Something tells me we might see another thrilling finish like that tonight. That yeah, was a very good finish for the Valley Forge. So they gave up a tying three with about four seconds to go. But I see the same kind of a ball game here on the varsity side. Both teams just fighting, looking for that first win. Uh, I'm excited about it. I want to see what's going on here. I want to see how this ends up. Absolutely, no doubt about it. And guys, we want to remind you, we are wrapping up. This is our final broadcast of 2019. The final time you'll hear us with the sponsorship slate. And if you want to be a sponsor in 2020, a 30-second commercial read during every single game, the written content on the website, the podcast, it's just crazy how much we do. 20,000 views a month, insane. And all that for a very low cost, let us know. Our first sponsor tonight, the main man of real estate, Richard Ward of Remax Beyond 2000. He's a full-time realtor specializing in listed homes, new home construction, military location, and pricing strategies while they're buying or selling. Richard Ward has the experience to buy God and get the job done. For more information, contact Richard at richardwardrealty.com. It doesn't matter if it's business or residential, your top river in Ohio is Hinkley Roofing. They're family run and built on the principles of hard work, customer loyalty, and getting the job done perfection each and every time. Perhaps best of all, they use only the finest quality roofing products, such as Owen Corning Roofing System, and we want you guys to go ahead today and visit them online at www.hinkleyroofing.com or call them at 330-722-ROOF. I'm going to hand it over to Ruben to tell you all about Set of Trophy, Game Day Tavern, and Cobos Insurance. Thanks, Vince. Uh, Set of Trophy, they've been with us for quite some time now uh, as one of our small business sponsors. And once again, if you want to be a part of our group along with Set of Trophy, just email Vince at CoachVin at Yahoo.com, CoachVin14 at Yahoo.com, or get a hold of me, Rube Rodriguez5 on Twitter, or RodFam0814 at Yahoo.com, and we'll get you on this list. Set of Trophy has been a staple of Northeast Ohio community for over 40 years for all your trophy and your celebration needs. This trusted company is always, always on time and completes their work to perfection every single time. You can visit them at 4335 Rocky River Drive in Cleveland. Game Day Tavern, if you're looking for a place to celebrate the big game, check out Game Day Tavern in Brook Park on 15119 Snow Road. They offer large a flat screens, the hardest bartenders, drink specials, trivia nights, local bands, and there's also an open mic night. And everything you would want in a great tavern, including that wildly popular game, the Queen of Hearts. For all your insurance needs, Cobos Insurance is the place to go. They've been serving the Cleveland area for over 50 years. They're independent agents, so they have a lot of companies to find customers your best rate. They specialize in car, home, life, and business insurance. They're a family-run business and at two locations, one in Lilaria and the other one in Avon Lake. Vince? Thank you again, Ruben. And guys, we want to remind you as you put on those holiday pounds, we want you to check out Cleveland Fitness Club. They got an all courts place, tracks. Those guys are open 365 days a year. Over there, right off of, uh, it's West 130th and over by like Pearl Road, Cleveland Fitness Club. We want to thank her again. She is returning an alumnus herself, Jennifer McWilliar. She owns Jenny's Popcorn, a good friend of mine. Spoke with her today, not even an hour ago, and she's coming back, and so is Jenny's Popcorn for 2020. Guys, they sell Jenny's everywhere. Mars, Giant Eagle, a big old bag. I mean, you can't stop eating it once it starts. I've seen Jenny's Popcorn in Toledo, Ohio at a Walmart, so they're everywhere. Also, we want to thank Rocket Fizz Candy, Frankie's Italian Cuisine. Swing by Frankie's tonight here in North Homestead right after the game. And also Mullins Construction 
for your next home or office repair. Now with the starting lineup for Belly Forge, Ruben Rodriguez. And we got the starting lineup uh, available for Valley Forge uh, Patriots tonight. They're starting, uh, one of their starting guards is uh, uh, sophomore Terrell Marks. At the other guard position is Norman Pomales. They play a three guard offense, so their third guard today is going to be uh, Logan Sass, uh, Tyler Quinones. Tyler Quinones is one of the forwards. And rounding out the starting five is Tyler Dickerson. All right, and that starting lineup was brought to you by MDG Flooring. If you're in need of quality flooring for your home or office, then look no further than MDG Flooring, America in Medina. There's nothing that Steve and his talented staff cannot handle. Call them today at 330-725-5252 or stop in and visit them at person 3812 Pearl Road in Medina. We'll be right back with tip-off. And here with North Olmstead starters will be Ruben Rodriguez, and those starters are brought to you by Middlefield Nutrition. If you're serious about eating healthy and still enjoying tasty treats that are actually good for you, then Middlefield Nutrition needs to be your first stop every time. Visit them today and see for yourself why they have everyone talking. Middlefield Nutrition is at 14960 South State Avenue in Middlefield. Here is Ruben Rodriguez. We got the starters tonight for North Olmstead. We have Jared Strong at the guard. He's a six foot two uh, senior. Also now at the forward position, Samuel Caps the second. He's also six two, but he's a sophomore. Jared Kelly starting at the other guard. He's five foot eleven, a freshman. Uh, Mario Coke, a forward, a six two, a sophomore, starting at one of the forward positions, and follow follow that up with Kevin Ola. Uh, junior six-foot guard, and that rounds up the starting five for the North Olmstead Eagles. Up next, tip-off. And we're back, and it's time for a tip-off. Fitz Mickey alongside Ruben Arias. Tonight, the Eagles and the Patriots set to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Tip-off time at the Eagles' nest. And we are underway. Ball to the Patriots, and away we go. Valley Forge working from right to left on your radio dial in the blue trunks, blue tops, white numerals. North Olmstead gets a steal. Number five's got it. It's up, it's in. And that was Jared Kelly getting it going for the Eagles. It started out Vince with a tight zone defense. Put the ball in the middle. They got trapped in the steal by Kelly. Puts in a layup. Back on the Patriots now. Playing that three-point perimeter. Patriot basketball kicks it outside. Down low inside, driving it in. Riley Kinter swatted away by the Eagles, and the ball will now stay with the Patriots. A good defense there. They trapped uh, Trell Marks underneath. He couldn't get free and uh, knocked the ball out of bounds. Thank you guys for joining us, fans. Listening to Keon Sports as we wrap up 2019, and there's Kinter for the first points for the Patriots. Yeah, Trell now Mark two to two. And yeah, Trell Marks got in there on the inbounds pass. Nobody uh, put a body on him, Vince. He got an easy bunny. Back come the Eagles. That was actually Trell Marks for the Patriots. With the bucket, Kinter plays for the Eagles. Three ball, North Olmstead off the front of the rim, no good. Swatted away. Back come the Patriots. Logan Sass has it. Up goes Sass. It's up. It's in. Now four to two. Valley Forge. A nice transition basket there off the missed jump shot. And Sass took it all the way. Jerry Kelly taking up the ball for the Eagles. Out to Cook. Cook has it. Looking, kicks it back out. Sass, nope. Off the body of Jared Kelly, and this one's going to go back to the Patriots. Yeah, a little bit of contact there underneath. It's not enough to call a foul. It was a good position. Cause the turnover. North Olmstead said we'll be going from left to right to start the game. They're in the white trunks, white tops, black numerals. And here come the Patriots, all knotted up to a piece early going. KeonSports.com bringing it to you. It is alumni night here in North Olmstead. I, myself, a class of 2000 graduate. Here come the Patriots down low, kicked away. And Ruben, as we mentioned, both teams looking for their first win tonight. Yes, they are. That was a good idea by, by Pomales. So he got inside and uh, passed it, but it was deflected. It's a good idea. And they're going to call Norman Pomales his first foul on the reach. Patriots lead it. Eagle ball, 4-2 early on here. Jared Kelly, the point guard, running the show up top. Winged out there. 35 for the Eagles. We do not have a number. Up, no good. 
And at 35, actually playing from JV tonight, Thomas Zito getting the start as well, a sophomore in Zito. So again, we mentioned it during pregame too, Ruben. Notice a lot of freshmen and sophomores not only on varsity, but starting. And starting on the, on the varsity team, which means we'll see them for the next couple of years and see that the team gets better. Yeah, I think Coach Frollo knows they need to start young, kind of blow it up, rebuild. But he is the man for the job. Here's Zito, swings it out to Cook. Cook around the top. And North Olmstead will reset it here. Here's Kelly down low to Zito. Up and under, it's good! Number 34. And that was Mario Cook. Now four to four. Yeah, Cook was at the right place at the right time there. Vince was right underneath a good reverse layup. And Patriot basketball, four to four is your score. Shot is up. Wide Cook battles for the rebound and has it. And they will lean heavily on Mario Cook tonight. Will the Eagles. Cook goes coast to coast. He got it! Six to four, North Homestead. Yeah, Cook grabbed the rebound, went coast to coast. Like you mentioned, Vince they got the layup. Might have been a little bit of a foul there, but they didn't call anything. Nope. Patriots have it underneath. Swatted away. Gathered up. It's Cook has it. Cook down low. No. North Olmstead kind of outran themselves yeah, there. Yeah, they but. got a good idea that he put a little too much on the pass, man. Yeah, saw Jared Strong streaking. That was one where you could have just taken it back and set up a play. Yeah, Jared Strong with that big body. As you know, he's a receiver for the Eagles. You heard us do three North Olmstead football games this year. A lot of North Olmstead on Keon Sports so far this fall and winter. All right, here's Valley Forge. It's up, it's no good. Good drive there though by Tyler Dickerson. Rebound to the Patriots, up. Number two, Trell Marks gets fouled. And Ruben, he will go to the line for a two. And I'll tell you what, Ruben, he did a great job there getting the rebound and going right back over there. Yeah, and, uh, and Kevin Ola missed a, a, a chance at the rebound. You just, the ball should never hit the ground on the rebound. Somebody's gotta go up there and get it. No doubt about it. Patriots trail six to four, have a chance to tie it, but he misses the first foul shot. Our next broadcast fans will be this upcoming Friday, actually a week from tonight, in Rocky River. I'm gonna check my schedule to see who they host, but I do know we are in River for that game. Valeria Catholic. They will host Valeria Catholic. Okay, so Trell nails it, Trell Marks. Now six to five, North Olmstead ball and leaves, stolen away by Marks, and stopped! All right, so basically, Zito had the ball for North Olmstead. Marks took it from him. Marks went to almost try to dunk it. Zito from behind to swat it away. He swat it away. Good defensive play after the steal, Vince. He just didn't give up on a play, went after it. Zito making the most of a surprise start tonight. He wasn't even on the roster sent to me today. All right, Patriots still maintain the ball. Four minutes to go. Down 6 5. Shot is up. Off the back of the rim. Rebound goes to the Eagles. It was Cook. Coast to coast for the Eagles, no good. Cook again, it's up, fouled. And the line will go Cook with a 6-5 lead, looking to extend. Yeah, Cook followed the play up nicely there, Vince. The ball, um, a couple of missed shots, Cook picked it up. So he's got four rebounds already early in this game. And fans, you heard us talk about it pregame. Sponsorship season is now open for 2020. High school sports, MMA, pro soccer, boxing, we do it all. And if you want to be a sponsor, email me, Vince McKee, CoachVin14 at Yahoo.com. What that means, basically, we will take your small business to the next level. Cook, first shot up and no good. Looking to split the deuce here. And he doesn't. Misses both, Ruben. Yeah, good box out there by Valley Forge. You get the rebound, but you got to make your free throws. Yeah, How you many do. times have we seen games where it comes down to miss free throws? Way too many times, bud. Shot up for Valley Forge, no good, rebound. Tracked down by Jared Strong, those long receiver arms. All right, North Olmstead has it, here's Zito. And we see no subs yet, both teams playing all five starters to, rim, to start this entire quarter so far. Six to five, Eagles lead it. Top of the key, there is Jared Kelly, the point guard. And Kelly gonna drive the lane, good move there, and he's in. Nice move by Kelly, Vince. He got found a little opening inside and didn't pick up his dribble. Got an easy layup. No doubt about it. And that will extend the score. Now 8-5. North Olmstead leaves it 8-5. Back home the Patriots. It's a big time move there by Chris Sledge. 
a great, great pass underneath, and he just couldn't miss the bunny. You got to hit the square. I'd say they got some size on him, dude. The Patriots. Yeah. There's Kelly. It's up. It's good. Give him there, Jerry Kelly, extending the Eagles' lead to ten to five. That's two times in a row. He just got right in there, penetrated right in the center. Had a nice, easy eight footer. Sizable crowd tonight here in the Eagles' nest, North Olmstead. And That's Kelly Forge, he yep. might have threw it away. He did. Walk us through it. Determined. If you notice. Uh, North Homestead's defense collapsing into the lane and try to, like you said, uh, Valley Forge has some height to him. That's one way to nullify it, just pack everybody in. Yeah, exactly. All right, North Homestead back the ball. Jared Strong has it, kicks it out to Cook. Eagle basketball up 10-5 right now. Their best start of all season long, basically. Here is Jared Strong swinging it out again. Down low to Cook. It's up. Swings. Great second pass there. He found Sammy Cap streaking. The perfect reason you get that second pass in there down low sometimes. It works. Now 12 to 5 Eagles. Yeah, perfect pass there from Cook. He got the ball and was trapped, and he got it to the right guy. Charging forward on the Patriots. Beautiful move there. Up and no good by David Rodriguez, but it looked good. Turn it right over. Any relation to Ruben Rodriguez? Yeah, it's good now. No relation. He's it's the first time out, but he's getting a little, they got a little too fast to prevent to cause another turnover because they had a guy down here open for a layup on a turnover. All right, this first quarter been brought to you by Great House Cleaning. That's Melissa Cusack, our girl with the mop and broom. Her top priority is customer service and ensuring that the people who hire her are not only satisfied but wowed by her service. Look her up on Facebook today, guys. Melissa Cusack, Great House Cleaning, 216-375-8460. If your house is a pigsty in desperate need of cleaning, call her. Cusack. Also, out your way, there's a cool place out there in Avon called Rain Barrels and More. Make sure you check them out. Give our girl Ann Gideon a call. She's got it all with CBD oils, rain barrels, does it all. 440-666-6577. All right, Ruben. 12-5 Eagles with the sizable lead right now for them. Down low come the Patriots, trying to get back in it. Good sidestep there. It's Pomalis, it's up, it is off the front of the rim, bouncing around, rubber rim no good. Rebound Patriots, great finger roll, no good. I mean, Great Chris offensive Sledge. rebound there from Sledge, but he couldn't get that ball, looked like it went in and out. Two excellent moves there by the Patriots, yeah. neither one went in. Three ball up in there, no good, Jared Strong. Rebound Patriots. Valley Forge trails, 12 to five here. Three ball Patriots. Off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound strong. Stolen away, Patriots. It's up. Another foul, no good. But that is Norman Palmales going back to the line. Yeah, Palmales got the rebound there off a missed shot. Went strong with it. Got to the free throw line. Sammy Caps on the foul. These foul shots brought to you by Helene Kia. Our guy, James McConville, Jimmy McBone. Look him up today. That is Helene Kia in North Olmstead. Walk in, tell them Vincent Rubin sent you, and you might be seeing yourself with a sizable discount. So the first foul shot for Mamala is up and no good. Score remains 12-5 North Olmstead. Got it. Kid out there, number 50 for Valley Forge. Vince, we don't have him on the roster. I have no idea who he is, so we're just going to call him Ace. We'll call him Ace. That'll be the There you go. Oh, Stuff City by Sledge. Nice block by Sledge. Chris there. Sledge is an animal out there. All kinds of height. And reach back home the Patriots up no good. I'll tell you what, Ruben, this game could easily be tied if the Patriots know how to make a lane. Yeah, and here's the thing too that the sledge got in the lane because that would have been the third time. That would have been the third time that uh, foul on him. yeah that Kelly got right in the lane yeah. for an easy layup. He said no more of this. Here's the thing too with sledge. You know, I, I get we're only eight minutes into this game or whatever it is, but this kid has a ton of talent, very athletic. He, he needs a lot of work on finishing, mm -hmm. a lot of work. He, he could be a force. Back come the Eagles. Three ball. Got it. Jared Strong makes it 15 to 5 Eagles. And it was like a pick and pop. Jared Strong found himself wide open at the top of the three point arc and nailed it. Yep. Back home the Patriots. Number two has it. Swings it out down low. Off the fingertips of Ace. And out of bounds it goes. Got a little bit too much sauce on that meatball, Vince. <laughs> right bit. off his hand and out of bounds. A Frank is a telling cuisine meatball there, and the, the head coach of Valley Forge, John Bokick, does not look happy. A lot of opportunities to score more than five points in this first quarter for those Patriots. Looks like North Olmstead may wait for the last shot of the quarter. Yeah, they're going to take the air out of the ball right now. 
13 seconds to go, and I got to agree with Ruben. Coach Frollo calling for last shot. Yep. Switch. 6.5, and here it comes for the Eagles. Three ball. It's a beautiful wide open three ball. And the coach, the Valley Forge coach, really angry, screamed at the ref that it was a moving screen. Right. Ruben, what did you see, bud? Yeah, just get that ball to Strong. If you don't want to wait for the last second shot, he'll take it from anywhere, anytime. Nailed it. But yeah, that was an. It's only a moving screen, Vince, if it's called. If it's not. You gotta go with it. You can cry until the cows come home, but they won't give it to you. Yeah. And that coach still glaring over at the rest. That ain't gonna change anything, coach. All right, that first quarter ends. North Olmstead 18, Melly Forge 5. And guys, soccer shots. The pitch is perfect for some outdoor action soon enough. My daughter Maggie loves it. This year we're signing up the Zook Madeline. It is soccer shots. Look them up today on Facebook. We'll be right back with your second quarter. All right, we just heard from our sideline reporter, Juliana Rodriguez, straight from the University of Toledo. And what did she pick up there, Ruben? It looks to me like uh, the problem with the free throws, the refs aren't looking at the free throw shooters stepping on the line or moving it forward before it hits the rim. And she's also got a problem with the moving screens, it looks like. Apparently so. <laughs> and guys, it's Kevin Ola. Let me fix that on my own screen here. Number 35 is not Zito on varsity. We apologize. It's actually Ola. I fat fingered that one today, buddy. All right, here comes the Patriots on the front of the rim. No good. Only five points in that first quarter. Unacceptable. Yeah. Again, another missed three, an offensive rebound, and not enough oomph on the shot to put it back in. Nope. Here come the Eagles. Here's Cook up top of the key. And looking at the five on the court right now, they haven't made any subs yet, North Holmes said. 18 to 5. Both of them said looking to extend the lead. Here's Cook. Driving the lane. He's got it. Wide open. In. Nice now 20 to 5. North Olmstead. Yeah, that was a strong move by Cook. Took it at the top of the key and made forced his way in the lane. Got a great layup. Yep. And our sideline reporter, Juliana Rodriguez, brought to you by Teresa Saban Real Estate 21. And there it is. Finally a bucket and a three ball for Nelly Ford. It's about time they got one to go, Vince. That's the first one out of five shots. All right, here we go. Now 20 to eight, North Olmstead leads it, going from left to right on the radio dial. White tops, white trunks, black trim. Eagles gonna slow down for a second here. Up 12, looking to extend. Swings it out, Sammy caps. It's up no good underneath there was Kelly. And Ruben, I see now finally we're gonna get a few subs. Yeah, they, uh, Vince, it looked like they went to a one, two, two zone there at Valley Forge and it kind of like uh, stunned the tide a little. Oh, almost thrown away by the Patriots. Picked up, three ball, got it. Six quick points, that was Tyler Dickerson. And just like that, now 20 to 11. Dickerson got a gift there and he, he made him right pay for it. Yeah. Right place, right time there for Dickerson. Eagles 20, Valley Forge 11. You are listening to the Keon Sports Radio Network. Look at that move by Cook. That's up getting stuffed, but I like this idea. It was Troll Marks on the block. Nice block by Marks and he didn't touch the body. Oh! Then Troll Marks goes coast to coast and puts it, it looks in. to me like Offensive foul, Vince, they oh. waved it off. They did, they waved it off and called the charge. <laughs> a little bit out of control with that drive there, but he looks like, it looked like uh, Cook was set. Yeah, because that could have been a chance for a nine, uh, nine point swing there. Yeah, I think that they back should back have, back a I think they still should have gave him the bucket and called I the agree. charge, because the ball was already up in the air. I agree, bad call. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Cook has it, number 34, Mario Cook. It's up, it's good. He's having himself a good little night. <clears throat> now eight points for Cook, as it's 24 for North Olmstead. Yeah, Mario Cook's getting whatever Valley Forge. He's getting whatever he wants under their events. Yeah, they may have is. to double team him soon. Big time. Back on the Patriots, Dickerson another three, got fouled and nailed it. Dickerson puts it up and in, he got hacked it and ball it. There was no call on the three, that should have been a four point play, but that's three in a row for Dickerson. Referee looked the other way on the hand slap, but the three ball is still good. 22 to 14. All right, swing it out. This is Kelly. Jared Strong has it. Back to Kelly. Up finger roll, no good. Gets his own rebound. No one boxes out for Valley Forge. A good, good sequence, sir, for Kelly. Vince, he took this shot, missed it, but never gave up on it. Got the offensive rebound. Kept the possession. Trow Marks coming back in the game for Ace. Ace comes on up. And the first substitute of the game for North Olmstead is Riley Kidder. 
as out comes Jared Kelly. We have to find out uh, the name for that number 50, Vince, before we get this night over with, because that's not what his mama called him when he was born. They call him Ace. We'll figure it out as we go. All right, reset the clock here, 22 to 14. North Olmstead leads it. Valley Forge looking for their first win of the year on the road. North Olmstead looking for their first win of the year, trying to protect the nest. Looks like Valley Forge had a talking to there at the end of the quarter. Sure did. Three ball, North Olmstead no good, and there's Sledge again with the big rebound. That's Sledge is a monster. Sledge underneath. has been getting getting some great rebounds offensively and defensively. Three ball, good. Spinones with a three there. He was wide open. Vincent took advantage of it. Don't look down, but it's a five-point lead. Yep. Just like that, number 23. Nails it. It's up, no good. Back on the Patriots. Now, just like that, down five. Another three ball, no good. I don't have him on there either, Vince. We got these rosters all messed up, but we'll get the names for you, folks. Yep, 23 hit that one. So it's 22 to 17, three ball, North Olmstead, good! Jared Strong makes it 25-17. Jared Strong with a nice jump shot from the right corner. Extend that lead a little bit, back up to eight. Patriots three ball, answer it, that one, Logan Sass. 25-20. Yeah, we got a three point shooting contest all of a sudden here, Vince. Just like that. 25-20, North Olmstead with the ball. Kinter up top, at point guard for Kelly. Three ball by Strong, no good. Good look there by Jared though. It's a great look. Jared Kelly had another wide open shot. Got a little heat check there, but it didn't go. Now, now, just like that, one more hoop in Valley Forge can turn this into a one possession game just like that. And again, when you know two winless teams, these are the things that happen. It's a double dribble that wasn't called there, Vince. Nope, three wall again by Valley Forge, no good. Kinter battles for the rebound, saved. But back to the Patriots, number 23 gets stuck. That's to go the other way, yeah. Off his body. Great job there by Riley Kinter. Yeah, and the other end over here, that was a double dribble that preceded that. Rest standing right there, didn't make a call. Bad Trell. pass. Trell Marks intercepts it at half court. Puts it up. And it gets stuck. That'll be a jump off possession, and the ball stays with Valley Forge. It should be Valley Forge ball. It should be. Patriots might have got away with the travel on that as well. <laughs> it looked like he kind of moved that front foot without taking it up. Yep. Yeah, John Fay coming in as a substitution. This game's getting a little hectic out here. He came in for uh, Kevin Ola. John Fay, as you may recall, a football player for the Eagles. It's up, it's good. Just like that, Logan Sass. Sass starting to take this game over. And now it's only 25 to 22 Eagle lead. That's a good penetration by Sass there, Vince. And now they got a little bit of a press going. North Olmstead swings it out. It should be a travel. It is. He shuffled those shoes in the lane, Vince. North Olmstead had a big lead and they're slowly falling apart. Yeah, Valley here Forge can the Patriots. Tie. Oh, yeah, right here, 25-22. And when you haven't won a game all year, you need to learn how to play with the lead. It's not easy. Dickerson drives the lane. Definitely a block on 34, Mario Cook. Mm. Yeah, I agree, that's a good call. Five and 13, Jared Kelly. Yeah, Dickerson, Dickerson a bit out of control there, but uh, Cook bailed him out by popping the hip in there a little bit. Drew the foul. Patriots right open. underneath, Sass wide open underneath. Sass has it, and Logan Sass taking the game over for the Patriots now. And a steal. And a steal by number 23, and just like that, the Patriots have come back. Stunning form, now leading 26-25. Couple of sequences there, layup by Sass on the wow. penetration and the steal leads to another bucket. And Valley Forge has the lead, folks, 26-25. Still two minutes and 45 to go in the second quarter. Number 23 says, you better know my name for Valley Forge. Unbelievable run. 23, we'll get you his name in a second, but obviously Logan Sass taking it over. And just like that, Patriots lead it 26 25 and Ruben, we knew coming in it would be that kind of night. It's one of those games when you have two teams both hungry looking for their first win. You're going to see a game like this. My question is Cook for uh, North Olmstead getting anything he wants underneath, but the team yet settles the last five possessions are all three point shots. Only one of them went in. 
when you get those deep rebounds and leads to layups, that's why the score is what it is now. I'll tell you what. The second North Olmsted started putting on their subs, they kind of fell apart. I hate to say it. Right, Eagles now getting trapped. Full court press by the Patriots. They're hungry. They smell blood in the water. Eagles break the press. It's up. No good. Kicked out. Eagles ball. They need to calm down. Wide open is Jared Strong. Misses the layup. Back up goes 30. Got it. A wild exchange with John Fave. Reclaims the lead for the Eagles. That was John Fave being at the right place at the right time. But just getting a little bit wild for uh, North Olmstead here. They're, they're, too, they're going too fast for their own good here. Eagles. Jared Strong has it. Back there out. Looks like the starting five now back in there for North Olmstead. No good. Bad pass. That didn't need to happen there. It's not a good decision by Kelly. North Olmstead 27, Valley Forge 26. 2.05 to go here in the second quarter. You're listening to KeonSports.com. Valley Forge has it going from right to left. Top of the key. Kamalis. There's Sledge again, and Sledge cannot make a layup. That's killing the Patriots right now. Up and at him, no good. Rebound there. A strong, strong dive by Sledge, but they couldn't finish it. They got two offensive rebounds. Couldn't put it back up, Vince. Nope. In a one-point game, you got to put, you got to hit those bunnies. Absolutely. Back home, the Eagles. There's the shot. It is no good. Rebound, Kelly's got it for the Eagles. No good. Rebound, Faye, but he turns it over. Patriots got to slow down right, right out of his hands. Logan Sass. Oh, no good. Rebound, Sledge. Sledge stripped again. Yeah, Sledge got the rebound, but when you're tall and you bring the ball down, the smaller guys now have a chance to knock the ball away or take it from you, and that's exactly what happened. I'll tell you what, anybody listening to this broadcast on the Valley Forge end, get Sledge in a gym all summer long mm -hmm. and work him out. This kid could be a beast, but he has to learn how to finish. There, there it is. You heard me talking. Sledge reclaims the lead for the Patriots. Still. 27. Still for the Patriots. It's up. No good. ill shot. Rebound back to the Eagles. They need to slow this down. Yeah, Valley Forge's hands are quick. They're getting into every pass. John Fay out of bounds. And you can't say the same for North Thompson. That's two straight silly passes in a row and loses possession. You know, and again, I'll, I'll just finish this point real quick. I haven't seen a kid with as much physical ability as this Chris Sledge. Someone really needs to work with him. He can be dangerously good. Yeah, he's dangerous under there. He's, he basically can get what he wants. He's got to slow himself down, though, but let the game yep. come to him. As he turns it, it turns it over again with a bad pass. Kid's got a lot of talent if someone can work with him. Here come the Eagles. Mario Cook has it between the legs. Nope, going to kick it back out. 28-27. Patriots lead it out of bounds. Maybe two possessions each left here at the most. Ruben, I gotta believe that if North Olmstead, you know, whatever, even if they score on this possession, I have to think Valley Forge is gonna hold for the last shot. Yeah, I think they are too. I think they should have slowed the pace down a little bit. And I'm guessing that number 23 that we don't have a name for is Canonas. He just changed jerseys. Yeah, that's all I can figure. Oh, yeah. All right, Abe, Abe Moon has it. I went to school with that kid's dad. Mm -hmm. I did. How wild is that? All right, here come the Eagles. 28 27, they trail. Jared Strong to Boontazer. Get a skinny. Great move by Abe. But then he turns it over. Yeah. All right, here. Good move. He should have just went right to the basket with that. Vince, the worst thing that can happen is you get fouled and get to the line. I'll tell you what, Belly Forge needs to hold for the last shot. They're up by a point with only 20 seconds to go. They'd be stupid to shoot it quick. Hold for the last shot, and you're guaranteed to go into halftime with the lead. But instead, it looks like they might turn it over here. Ran down by Kiones. We're going to open. That. Oh, nice move. Logan Sass for three. <laughs> And Logan Sass, player of the first half by far, Logan Sass taking this thing over, Ruben. And that's going to be a four-point play, Vince. Hey, call that Abraham Montezer with well, the they, foul. He fouled him on a three-pointer, so he's got one more free throw. And they did exactly what I, you know, I thought they should do, hold for that last shot. Mm -hmm. Nothing can go wrong when you do that. At the worst, you're still going to go into halftime with a one-point lead. Instead, he nails it. They're going to say it was a two and not a three for Logan. But still, now a Valley Forge lead of 30 to 27. You can go into halftime here, leading the team in scoring with 12 points. How come Sledge doesn't want to pick up any nonsense fouls now? North Olmsted built a double-digit 
first half lead all the way up to 18 to 5, I believe it was, Bodie, at one point. Yeah, it's been 20 a 20 to 5 at one point. 25 points, second quarter for Valley Forge. They had five at the end of the first. Well, they just fell apart. Logan, Logan Sass, man, mm -hmm. taking it over. 11 points, could get number 12 right here. Whatever Coach Bochuk said to them after the first quarter, it stuck to him. Sure did. That's KeonSports.com. If you're listening to us tonight, first time for Coach Smotzer, thank you. And, you know, if you own a small business, guys, thousands of people will hear this in your community. CoachVin14 at Yahoo.com for sponsorship. Sass nails the foul shot, and we go to halftime. Oh, no. That oh. ball goes out of bounds. they got to put some time back on the clock. Vince. It should be like a 1.1 seconds should be left on that clock. We got more time. Timeout call for Valley Forge with 0.5 seconds to go. It is now Valley Forge 31, North Olmsted 27. North Olmsted bungled in bomb pants. Yeah. And here we go. Yeah, they need to they need time. to get more time. They gotta get at least a half a second back up there. Now they're gonna talk to the to the scorers table, referee with the timekeeper. Words being exchanged. They might be listening to Ruben, maybe a split second more. Yeah, they, they need to put more time, but if it's a home, it's a it's a home team scorekeeper, I doubt they'll get the time. It should be 1.1 though left on that clock. And this first half was brought to you by Airport Go-Kart. Also top tier performance. Our guy Chris Walker wants to get you in tip top shape. His combinations, he will teach you in that gym are amazing. Boxing, MMA, wrestling, high school wrestling, this kid does it all. Chris Walker. Text or call him today, 216-789-7540, or email him at cwalker at 199-571 at gmail.com. Mention Keon Sports, and he will offer you a 15% discount, and that will do it for the half. One full second left as they added, what, about a half a second there, right? They give him the half second. That's a ball went out of bounds. I thought it was a little more than that, but they'll take a second. Another bad, bad pass from North Olmstead. No, don't said blue this this quarter. You're down four points. You don't want to make this thing worse, which they have. Just hold on to the ball when you get the rebound. Let the time run out. Go to halftime and, and make your adjustments. They could be down seven points here, Vince. Here we go. Valley Forge looking for a buzzer beater. They can't get the ball in. That's a problem. Five-second call. They would. Five-second call. All right. Now it will be North Olmstead with a chance for a last-second shot. I don't like to say this about young athletes, but there are, there are some when you look at their records. Whoa! There's some reasons why you're still winless. They got to talk about this at halftime and come out here. And yeah, both teams, no doubt. Both teams, yeah. All right, so Jared Kelly shot no good. That will do it for the first half. Here's scored halftime. Valley Forge 31, North Olmstead 27. We will go to the second half, and guys. Let me remind you one more time, 2020 sponsorship season begins in four days. Please give me a call, email me, whatever you have to do, Vince McKee at coachvin 14 at yahoo.com. Let us do you that favor. Let's talk about your small business on air. Again, coachvin 14 at yahoo.com. We will see you in the second half. We're on our way here in the second half. Belly Forge, North Olmstead. North Olmstead hits a three and right back in it. We'll get you in with that number right now. That, that was, was quick. Strong. That was Jared Strong. That yep. was quick. One pass and a three. They got back down by one point, man. All right. Keonius has it for Valley Forge. They lead 31-30. Now going from left to right. Three ball. Dickerson off the front of the rim for the Patriots. Rebound Cook. And the Eagles to take over. And we're going to have a special guest join us here in a second. Here it comes, North Olmstead, back the ball. Mario Cook has it top of the key. And the Eagles up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jared Kelly, right in the middle. There's that guy again, Sledge, with another steal, Vince. And a special guest to do some commentary here <coughs> with Ruben and myself. Former head coach, Tim Smotzer. How are you doing, coach? I'm doing great, great. It's great to be watching this game. I love it. An exciting first half, a little back and forth, huh? Right, right. All right, North Olmstead has it. It is Cook, top of the key now. Strong, back out to Olaf. And obviously North Olmstead, if you're mispronouncing it, his name, coach will help us out here. <laughs> I wish I could, I wish I could, Vince. What happened in that first half? Why couldn't they maintain that? It was about a 15 point lead. Oh, I mean, day. what happens is Valley Forge did a great job adjusting to our zone 
And, you know, they started hitting some shots. And then we started turning the ball over. And North Olmstead lit up no good. Coast to coast goes Terrell. No good rebound there by Dickerson. And Terrell Marks had a good look there. Yeah, Sledge looks, runs it down. Looks like he's a little out of control there too, Vince. He had an easy layup. There's Sledge again. And Coach, I made mention, I got to say, number 13 here, Chris Sledge of Valley Forge. I think he's the most, most athletic kid on the court. He needs to learn how to finish. Sure. Well, I, I don't know names, but number two for Valley Forge, I believe he just visited Notre Dame Charles today. Marks. Yeah. Okay. For football. You know, the, the biggest difference that I could tell from, um, you know, when, when you used to coach way back when, until now, you know, it's only been 20 years still, but is the is the upper body strength a lot of these kids have. You can tell they're, oh, they're absolutely. in the gym 365. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, what a great venue, though, huh? Yeah. As far as I just... Gorgeous. It's up. It's good. That was Keone's. And now Valley Forge Patriots lead at 33 to 35, 51. Vince McKee alongside Ruben Rodriguez and the coach Tim Smotzer on a very special alumni night. Three ball by Strong to tie. No good. And Terrell Mark does a smart thing by letting that go out. Yeah, Jalen's been getting a. Uh, uh, Jared's been getting a lot of open threes, yeah. coach. Uh, so maybe they should start going a little bit inside because they're not starting to fall. You got you got Cook underneath. Probably getting all he wants tonight. Well, I'm going to tell you another thing that I've noticed that happened. Valley Forge is really hurt North Olmsted on the offensive boards. Again, and early in the game, that wasn't happening. Yeah. Three ball missed there by Marks. Back come the Eagles. Jared Strong. He's a receiver in football. He's got those long arms. But again, Coach Rubin, yet again, another turnover. Yeah, unforced. right. Yeah, yeah, unforced. It, it's Remember, there's a lot of lack of experience going on. you got a lot of inexperienced guys here. But it's not an excuse. You know, it's it's time to get better. Well, this is the level to do it at. Right. You know, a lot of times you can right. get a JV, but if you get that chance as a freshman and a sophomore, I mean, that's so rare right. to get that opportunity. you got to take advantage of it. Jerry Kelly to try to tie it for the yeah. Eagles, no good. And there's back a, comes the Patriots. There's a perfect example of your right. experience, so Coach. Logan Sass. Right, right. Logan Sass makes it now 35-3, the biggest lead of the game for the Patriots. Eagles need to slow this down for a split second because here comes that full court trap. And timeout, time smart coach, timeout there. And coach, I've always been a proponent of the full court press in boys and in girls basketball. My take on it is the fastest way to break these presses is just pass the ball over the top. Because the more you dribble, the more you're inviting the defense. For sure. What, what I've seen is when kids are getting double teamed, they don't look up the floor. They only look to their immediate, usually behind them. They look up the floor, well, you're getting double teamed. Somebody's going to be open, okay? And the other part of it, and I see this happening with both teams, you got to go ahead and flash to the ball. You might be open, but there's not a passing angle for you to get the ball. You have to come to the ball. Well, it's kind of okay. like a, a receiver in football. When you see your quarterback to scrambling, you come, come back to, him. to the ball. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly right. And coaches, as you sit here at the announce booth tonight, do you have any of those old feelings come up? Of oh, absolutely. You, you know, I mean, coach? you know, I was coaching last year at Notre Dame Cathedral Latin, so you know, been that long. yeah. So you know, I had to sit out this year, but no, I'm looking to get back into it. I love it. How are you feeling? Absolutely, just great. Just great. Thank you. And there's that man again, Logan Sass. Gets the steal for the Patriots. Almost connects on the shot. Gets swatted out of bounds. But again, Ruben and Coach, that's what we've been seeing. We've seen this kid midway through the second quarter. Logan Sass catch fire, and he has not been pulled off since. Yeah. you got to give credit for Cass for not giving up on the play either. Right. Behind and well, I see both teams playing very hard. Here comes Cook. Back to the Eagles. Swinging it out. Up top to Strong. Back up to Ola. Swinging up. Smart move here from North Olmstead to slow down just to knock sure. down five. Sure. Game's not out of reach by right. any stretch. Right. Driving the lane. There's Ola. They slowed it down, got a layup. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said as far as being patient. Yes. Now 35 to 32. North Olmstead trails it down by three. Patriots have the ball. There's Trell Marks. Might have got to win with a bit of a travel there. Not a sledge. Turns it over. Here come the Eagles. There you go. Jared Strong, just like that, now 35-34. And points off transition have been big for Valley for uh, for North Olmstead tonight, Coach. Yeah, the, the um, they're a better team when when they pressure the ball. They really are. All right, here come the Patriots again, trying to build a one-point lead. There it is, Logan Sass, back rim, no good. 
Marks the battle for the rebound, but taken away by Jared Strong. Let's, let's get a good possession here. Let's kind of let's reverse the ball like we did the last time. Again, coach, when you penetrate and you're eight foot away from the basket and you kick it out for a 20-foot three-pointer, I don't see any sense in that. That's no, me. no, no. That's how the game has changed. That's how the game has changed. Don't watch that on TV. Yeah. NBA does that. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. yeah, the game has really changed that way. Uh, Trell Marks turns it over. Sass. This should be a jump ball. We heard Frollo scream timeout. That'll go to the North Alms so they yep. had the possession arrow wins, but there's a perfect example of He's it. lucky you didn't hear him call timeout. Yeah, yeah. That's what's, what's going to make the Eagles better, their hustle. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, I don't know about this game, but the game I saw them early in the year, they were starting three sophomores and a freshman. They, right? Tonight, yeah. same deal. Yeah, same thing? Yeah. You don't hear of a freshman starting in high school, so that's yeah. definitely in the right direction. And this Kelly kid who's... I mean, yeah. it's a nice little take to the basket. A I mean, a little bit of contact, yeah. there, fellas. Yeah. Ball. Good stuff there by Sledge. Again, Patriots throw it away. And I said it in the first half, and I'll repeat it. Neither one of these teams right now know how to play with the lead. And I don't say that in an angry right. way, but that is something you well, learn as you go. What I've seen, and Vince, this is really what you're saying. There's really no has been no flow to the game whatsoever. None. Just a lot of back and forth. Right. Both teams have struggled once they get the lead to start turning right. it over. And Here's Trell here. Marks. Like Kicks it out. Here's Sass. Logan Sass. I think he's a lefty. The more I watch him, right to the lane. And right. Logan Sass. Right. And that was 37 30. 34. That all evolved, coach, just like a piggybacking on what you said. Got two guys dribbling on the press, and the other three standing right. around. Nobody coming back to the ball. Well, Dad, plus, I don't see us looking up the floor. Okay, let's look up the floor, see the open man. There's got to be somebody open. Yeah. Back on the Eagles. Oh, stolen away by Marks, the Notre Dame man. It's up, it's probably good. No, gotta finish that. Rebound Patriots, up, foul. And good credit there to Norman Pomalis for trailing that shot. It's a good steal by Marks, easy drive. Oh. To slow themselves down a little bit, coach. It looks like they're rushing themselves. Yeah, that close yeah, the it, what happens, you know, we, we struggle this year, you want to win so bad that maybe you try to do too much sometimes, you know, and, and it's almost like a mental thing sometimes. Here's Pomalis, it's up off the front of him, rolls out no good. Score remains, Valley Forge 37, North Olmstead 34. You're listening to KeyOnSports.com, Vince McKee, Coach Tim Smotzer, and Ruben Rodriguez. Tonight, somebody's O has got to go. <laughs> good boxing reference for y'all. <laughs> and it's up, it's good. This kid's got a nice stroke at the free throw line. Yeah. And here's that full court press See, again, we looked guys. up the floor, see there's guys open up the floor again. There you there go. You go. Stolen away by my man Sledge. Sledge has it. Can he finish this time? Sikione is good. Extra pass to Bamales. Trell Marks passes up the three. Marks up. Got some contact. It's a nice move right there. Under control. A nice pump fake out in the lane. Made it up nice and easy. And a turnover follows. Coach, let me ask you this real quick. What do you feel about three sport athletes? I feel it's a good thing. The, the whole it's a great thing. Thing. Okay, you 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 definitely want to. You know, we're in a a place Sass. where where people want to specialize, but it's hard to play three sports at a Division One school. Right. Okay, but no, you want a multi-sport athletes. There's a, there's a statistic out there in the NFL last year's draft out of the first and second round. I think there's 64 picks. 60 of them played multi-sports in high school. Okay, I mean, you're talking NFL draft. I mean, college recruiters want to see football players play basketball. You can tell what kind of athleticism they have, how they compete. I mean, they want to see kids play basketball. You know, and the thing, the thing too, you know, as long as I've been watching sports, you might be the best kid on your high school basketball team. That doesn't mean anything when you get to college. Absolutely. You're, you're lucky to make right. the college right. team then. And what I found, kids that decide to play one sport, they become soft. Yep. Okay? They, they don't compete as much. The, I mean, the muscle tissue, there's, there's a lot to it. Right, right. All right, Eagles now trailing 42-34, to 34, their biggest deficit of the game. Just like that, it really didn't seem like Belly Forge is dominating, but there's Trell Marks again. Trell Marks, hand on his back, it's up, no good. And a touch foul called. And uh, Sammy Cavs better watch his mouth right there. It looked more like a frustration call, a foul there from Samuel Yeah, Pat. right. Well, well he definitely pushed him in the back. I, there's nothing to complain about. Well, case in point there, Sammy Cavs is a hell of a football player. Really yeah. good running back for right. the Eagles. Covered him multiple times this year. Right. I am a 
firm believer, and I mean firm, in kids playing multiple sports. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But, I mean, it's sadly, it's not the trend anymore. No. It's, it's a new world. There's Charles Marks. Up, no good. And Coach Rubin, let me ask you this. I've seen at least 10 missed foul shots tonight. Well, and I'm going to, and I have a whole theory on that. Like, when the kid's little, if there's a rack of balls in an empty gym, he's going to take that ball. He's going to shoot a three pointer. Yep. And oh, because of that, I don't think the kid's shooting form is as good now because they're they're trying to launch these threes when they're too little. What do we, uh, we just Vince, said and I, yeah. Vince and I were talking about that too. It's like these kids right. are out there practicing three point shots. Right. Here's Logan Sass again off the rebound. Nope. And it, it's getting danger mode time now for the Eagles. Down nine. And I'll tell you, it doesn't look like the Valley Forge is nine points better than them. You right, know, sometimes right. the scoreboard will tell you something that if they would just slow it down, they could really take over. But now you're building yourself a bit of a hole here. You need to find an identity. Here come the Eagles again. Loose ball. Good job there to keep it alive. That is uh, Jaden Roman in the game now. And what's happening is Vince, they're going to that 1 2 2 zone defense until they get to the lane and everybody collapses. Right. Right. All right, back home the Eagles, down nine. He traveled, that's a travel. Traveled. Jared Strong. And again, you know, we, we referenced it. Nice steps, boy. A lot of, you know, freshmen, sophomores, all right. that. It's going to take time for this team to find, their, to find an identity. Right. They got most of their points in the first quarter off transitions, turnovers, things right. like that. Right, right. But in the second half, and, and Coach, you could definitely speak on this, in the second half, kids get tired. Things wear down. It slows down. Yeah, it, that's well, you gotta find that we have a, other than the strong kid right now. We have four new players out here. You know, and so I think that's what he's kind of looking at right now. Looking at a different combinations. Logan Sass underneath, stolen away. This is going to be a good break now for the Eagles. With 13 seconds, they should hold for the final shot. Down nine, throws it, but tipped out of bounds. Yeah, and and I have to believe Ruben that Coach, Coach Frollo wants the final shot here. Yeah, I'd, say, I'd say that'd be the thing to do, pass it until you get the best shot. But that depends who you have on the court, too. you got to get your shooters and your playmakers sure. out there. Well, worst case scenario, worst case scenario, you're, you're only down single digits here, right? Mm -hmm. right. You turn it over, do something stupid, it could be double digits. Right. Be very careful. Here's Abe Muntazer. Went to school with that young man's father. That shows how old I am right now. <laughs> Swings it out. 13 has it. Goes, kicks it back out to Kinner. Three ball! All right, hey, thanks for having me on here. I appreciate it. Hey, you guys do wonderful things for high school sports here. We can't tell you how much we appreciate that. Coach, it's okay. our pleasure. It really is our okay, pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. appreciate you, sir. Thank, thank you. All right, fourth quarter underway here. You're listening to KeonSports.com. Vince McKee, Ruben Rodriguez, we want to thank head coach Tim Smotzer for joining us in the third quarter. And now here in the fourth quarter, we have perhaps the greatest basketball player in North Olmsted High School history, the man, the legend, the myth, the former Cleveland Cavalier. <laughs> now I won't go that far. Joe Smith, how you doing, bud? Good, Vince. Thanks. Uh, I definitely wouldn't say I'm anywhere near one of the best basketball players in North Olmsted, but I appreciate the, uh, the comments, that's for sure. No doubt about it. All right, Eagles down nine, going from right to left, up and no good. And Joe, what do they have to do here to get back in it quickly? I, I honestly think they need to get the ball to Jared Strong, number three. I mean, he's their, he's their only real senior with a lot of experience. He can score. Um, I just don't know if he's had many touches since the first quarter. And, um, you know, right now, giving up 45 points to three isn't bad, but when you only score 34, you know, so I think they got to find ways to get Jared the ball and let him get some shots here. All right, up and at him is Kinter, no good. And I think they got to put a body on Mr. Sledge here for yeah. Valley Forge. Sledge and Marks could take this game over in a yeah. heartbeat. There's Marks again. Yeah, they, um, you know, we're turning it over for points. And, you know, turning it over is bad, but when you turn it over for points like this, it's, you know, it makes things a lot more challenging. So Big time. They're strong. Nope. Good job. Well, the one thing I noticed, you know, we were talking about it with Coach, too. In the first quarter, North Thompson got a lot of their points off transitions, yes. turnovers, hustle plays. Now that it's kind of slowed down a little bit in, in the second half, that's where they need to find their identity. Yeah, it's, you know, they're a young team. I mean, right now, I, I don't know all the guys that are out there, but they've got one senior, one or two freshmen out there, and a couple sophomores. And it's, you know, running half-court offense, it takes some skill and it takes some continuity, and you can tell they don't have it right now. So when you get out in the open floor, Scoring in transition's a little easier, but when you're not getting stops, you don't get out in transition, so. Nope, exactly. Three ball no good off the front of the rim. Quiones, this should be Valley Forge ball. Nope, the call the jump. 
It's going to be a jump ball going Valley Forge's way, Vince. No, and Joe, and, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. And Joe, just to uh, the harp on what you were saying here, it, it's an experience thing. Yes. It looks like Valley Forge's uh, adjustments they made in the second half. Because I know Cook was getting whatever he wanted inside in that lane. Now they're collapsing everything and making it difficult for these other guys to shoot from the outside and try to get points here. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think Valley Forge, you know, they're, they've got a lot more seniors, upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. Just the experience. The first quarter, North Olmsted got out and ran. And uh, since then, Valley Forge has made some nice adjustments, running a little bit more half offense, slowed it down, and now they're getting turnovers for points. And, you know, we don't have the athletes right now with the experience to match up with Valley Forge. Valley Forge, foul shot up, rolled in, rolled out. Another missed bunny, man. And we were, you know, we were talking about this pregame, and actually, it was funny because Coach alluded to it as well. You know, we're thinking... A lot of kids growing up are taking way too many three-pointers and not enough foul shots. And you, you see it on the high school level, so many more missed foul shots. Yeah, it's um, you know, it's something all these you watch these kids go to the parks or the open gyms and they're all shooting threes. You never see anybody lining up at the foul line shooting 25, 35, 40 free throws anymore. Nope. And it's obvious if you watch, they don't have that soft touch. They're all shooting, you know, 25 foot plus and they, they nobody can shoot 12, 15 foot in. So very true. Oh, or if they're tall enough, they're dunking it. Yeah, exactly right. You know, they if you watch a lot of these high school games now, it's either three-pointer or layups. You know, you don't see any mid-range jumpers. Yep. And, and now you can attribute that maybe to the Houston Rockets or the Golden State Warriors, but, you know, they that, that format's been rolled out into high school now. So that mid-range game and free throws included, the kids lack that skill. They lack that, that touch. Very good point. Took the words out of my mouth. Here comes North Olmstead, three ball. There's Good! Strong. There's Jared Strong. And just like that, makes it a 10 point game with six minutes to go. Valley Forge, 47. North Olmstead, 37. And you see the Patriots miss two foul shots, and it opens up the door. Here come the Eagles. That's how you make a run. You capitalize off those missed foul shots, you make a run. Yeah, then he did again. Hit him again. Jared Strong again. for three. No uh, good. That's yeah, a good look. They need yes. to get strong, and they need to get Cook in yep. this game. Oh, big time with Cook. Uh, here comes Keone's 10 point game. And you have to feel right now that the Eagles have one last good run in them. It's when they put their foot on that gas pedal to get that done. Valley Forge, Logan Sass, the man who took the game over. Up, oh, it is good! And Logan Sass! He's been penetrating all game long. He's getting whatever he wants down the lane. So you got to put an extra body, make sure he doesn't get in there. Because when he does, you can't stop him. And that might be the that might be the dagger there because you want to get it down to single digits and, and move from there. Yeah, we haven't, um, you know, we came out fast in the first quarter. I think we had 24 25 after one. Yep. We've only scored 12. So, really, at this point, if we're giving up anything, it's going to make it that much harder for us to come back from a you know, 13 point deficit. There it is, Logan Sass again. Now, Sass the biggest up. deficit of the game for the Eagles 50 to 37. Valley Forge leads it. Jared Strong to the lane. It's up. Go. It's good. When they're waiting for you to shoot those threes, up, penetrate, get in that lane. Here's Trell Marks. Rumors of him being at Notre Dame earlier today. Keone is between the legs. And now Valley Forge could really settle this down up 11 and pick their spots. Here's Dickerson. Good crossover there by Dickerson. Spot up jumper, and looked like it was good, but roll out. Not a good no, shot up 11. That's not a good no, shot at that's all. That's a big 11. stop for North Homestead, too. They, yes. they can't afford to be uh, go, trading Jared. basket yeah. for basket. Jared Strong, now here we go. Single digit game again. 50 to 41. Both teams have shown the light. They've struggled a little bit to play with the lead. Let's see if Valley Forge knows how to close. Let's see if North Homestead has the kind of grit there and hustle. Go. And there you go. Jared Kelly has it. To the lane, to the lane. Good! And just like that, it is Valley Forge 50, North Olmstead 43, and sit tight, folks. We have ourselves a bowl game. Time out here from Valley Forge, Vince. A good couple of series for North Olmstead on the defensive end. He made yep. a couple of quick stops, got some quick buckets and transition out of it. That's what they were doing in the first quarter. That's exactly yeah, it looks like it. Coach Farella made some adjustments there. They were doubling the ball and, you know, looking for that long opposite pass, so... Now, Joe, what years did you play here? And again, I know the answer to these questions, but maybe our audience doesn't. Sure. What years did you play here, and what years did you coach? I was I played here '95 and '96. So, Coach Schmatzer's first two years at North Olmstead uh, were my my junior and senior year here. Um, and then I went away to Akron and played uh, played baseball there. 
when I came home in 2000, coach offered me an opportunity to coach with him at the freshman level. So I spent from 2000 to 2010 coaching freshman JV. And then when he coach stepped down in 2010, I took over for 2011, 12, and 13. And then when I stepped down is when Coach Frollo took over. So he's been here since uh, since I stepped down. You know, what, what does it feel like sometimes? I mean, I, I know you got to miss it. Even myself here tonight, we're having a blast. We're doing this. But, you know, you got the kids at home. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a mixture of two worlds. How do you keep it balanced? You know, I, you know, I love North Olmstead. Like I said earlier, I love North Olmstead. Everything about North Olmstead. And, you know, um, it, I just enjoy getting a chance to come out. Tonight's a special night for Coach Schmatzer. You know, that's really what it's about. And we're, you know, we're celebrating him as a person, as a coach, and and, and recognizing everything he's done for this community. And there was Trell Marks to the lane and in. Now 52-43 in that Trell Marks. You heard Coach Frollo screaming to take a charge. Nobody really got in there, but I don't know if I can blame him. That kid's big. I wouldn't want to get run over. And Here's Marks again. Turnover, Trell Marks. This might be it. Dickerson, it's up. It's good. Marks and Dickerson, Vince, they're the ones that orchestrated this entire comeback. After the first quarter, only scoring five points in the first, and there he goes again. Trail marks again. Out of the Valley Forge timeout. They just come out, Joe. Six straight, just like that. Obviously, head coach John Bokick made the adjustments needed. Now 13 points again. Three-pointer by Cook. Cuts down to 10. Cook with a big bucket there, Vince. It's send the tide a little bit because this was the, the mark show. Mario Cook's got to meet him at half court there. Doesn't do it. Keone's, it's up, it's good. Yeah, they're getting no resistance underneath anymore, Vince. It's like, you, and if Valley Forge is going to do you a favor and shoot that quick, you better make a miss. Swing it out. And Joe, it doesn't look good for Alma Mater no, right now, but. No, it does not. That's the way. That's this way. That looked like it. The ball looked like it went off of Sass's leg and out of bounds, but it'll sure stay did. there, didn't it? It sure did, yeah. If momentum doesn't change tonight and this one goes the way of the Patriots, Joe, as a former coach and player, what do the Eagles take out of this tonight? Well, I think they fought. They're, 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 this may be the first time they've been in a game in the fourth quarter all year with as young as these guys are. You know, I think you learn a lot of the losses. They battled. You know, they fought. I think mean, just Valley Forge's experience and athleticism at the guard position just took over and you know you really can't combat that when you're when you've got three freshmen and sophomores on the floor here's jared strong on the turnover strong it's up he gets stuffed by sledge there's Outside. marks again on the block it was. vince it was Trump and, marks. and joe i do agree with you man you learn more from losing a ball game than you do blowing somebody out yeah a lot of times winning mass opportunities, when you lose, they're, they're, they're obvious. And But I, what I see tonight is a young North Homestead team who's fighting. They haven't quit. They've been in some games where they've been blown out. They, they came out to try to win this game, so their, their effort's been there. All right, here's Trell Marks again to put it away for the Patriots. Nope, there's Sledge, no good. And I, you know, I, I've said it on the recording, you know, just, just just being an announcer, I've seen a ton of high school sports lately the last couple years. This kid here, this number 13, Chris Sledge, is one hell of an athlete. I mean, he's got unbelievable skills to him, but he doesn't know how to finish. He's missed so many layups tonight, so many putbacks. You know, what kind of thing do you do in the offseason to work on that if you're that kid? And he's only a sophomore. He's going to get better. He's just got to learn to use his body and, and position himself where he can finish better. But, I mean, he's athletic. He's quick. He jumps fast. Um, he'll be fine. He'll be good. He'll be good. I mean, he, he, he touches the ball almost every time there's a scamper or a loose ball, he's right there, you know? Yeah, that is, the point that he only has four points is amazing as much as he's been around that rim today, too, Vince. It's, I mean, I'd, I'd hate to see a shot shot. It's probably two for 20. But a ton of rebounds. I see big things from this kid yeah. if somebody works with him. Two minutes to go. Thank you for joining us. Keon Sports, Vince McKee, alongside oh, Joe Smith is. and Ruben Rodriguez. 58 to 46. Swing it out. North Olmstead three ball, it is no good. Rebound, Trell Marks. I don't know about you, Vince, but that's my player of the game right there. Trell Marks, I must agree. No doubt about it. Joe, let us take this moment to thank you again and just kind of ask you, you know, alumni night, very special night with all the alumni. You know, what goes into this? I know me and you started talking about this back in July almost. Yeah, we've been planning it for a while. And again, we just wanted a night to recognize Coach Schmatzer for everything he's done for the school, for the program for the community, and uh, you know, a lot of people involved, Vince, you, and 
and Ruben and, and Thanks, Angel Lozada and Coach Frollo and you know it's it's all worth it when you do something for somebody else it, it's worth it so you know I just hope Coach understands after tonight and I know he does how much we all appreciate him and love him and respect him. He's terrified. And for you, He's I mean, it, it's extra special because that's your brother and law coaching. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. got to be a cool feeling. No, it really is. It's, uh, you know, C Coach Frollo puts everything he has into it. He played at PW. He's a basketball guy. And, you know, if I had boys, I'd want my boys to play for him. I know that much, so. But I want to take a moment to let, to thank you two for everything you guys do and just you know, wish continued success for you and your whole team and key on sports because I know everybody involved in high school sports really appreciates everything you guys do. So thank you from all of us out here. Well, we appreciate that. That's why we do thank this. And it's been just a little over a year for us and the fact that the numbers are coming in the way they are, just totally mind-boggling. We had no idea it was going to be that it's way. It's awesome. You guys do a great job and there's such a need just to get out and let these high school athletes, you know, hear their name or... You know, it, it means a lot to him, so. No doubt about it. Aiden Utazer hits the three. Now a nine-point game. As I mentioned, I actually went to school with that kid's father. I can't begin to tell you how old I feel <laughs> when I say that. So a minute 13 to go, nine-point game. And this is, the, this is the time of the game where you see a good full-court press. If a, if a team has a press, now is the time. How do you work on that in practice? You just, I mean, you just have to put the time in. I mean, it really comes down to teaching positionings and angles and use, utilizing the, the out-of-bounds lines as an extra defender and the teams that understand spacing and angles sometimes it feels like you're going against eight guys you know and, yeah. and, and they, the teams when they really emphasize it and they run a good full court press it's very difficult to beat. You know the one thing I've noticed in, in the, like I said we've been doing this a little over a year um, is the girls basketball is a little bit more fundamentally sound. As crazy as it sounds it really is. Like, they have better presses. They have better press breaks. They pass the ball more. They rebound the ball more. It, it's, it's freaky. Yeah. But it's more fundamentally sound. The girls' side, they rely on executing their plays much more than on the boys' side. Yeah. They really do. And the fact that in the women's game, too, I call, still call it the women's game, you don't have that 10 second in the backcourt either, so you can concentrate on getting your passes to the yeah. right people at the same time. They have no backcourt. They have no 10 second rule there. All right, fans, sit tight. Here we go. We're either going to have an exciting finish or the clock putter out. Keonius has it. Valley Forge. Patriots trying to break the press. Patriots have it. Good trap there by North Domestead. They get the turnover. Here comes North Domestead. To the line, to the lane. Good! And just like that, 58-51. Everybody sit tight. Yeah, the double team on the press are about half court work. And, and uh, Jared Strong took the ball in there. I think he may have gotten hit there, too, but they didn't call it. Not the time for North Dome to get a technical here, arguing with the ref. Not the time. You've cut it down to seven. The last thing you want to do now. Yeah, you got it down to seven points. You don't want to go give them two points on a bench technical either. You want to talk about a momentum killer no. here, boys. All right, so let's play a magical game right now. All right, Ruben, you're the belly forward coach. Give me five seconds. What are you telling your team? You're telling your team to quit fouling, pass the ball. You don't rush yourself on a press. Make sure you find the open guy, get it to him and cross half court. Once they cross half court, they're going to get fouled. They're not going to get fouled in the back court, but they, North Olmstead has to stop the time on this clock. So they're going to get fouled. They can't be turning the ball over at mid court. Joe Smith, you're back on the sidelines. What are you telling your team right now? I'm getting the ball to number two, and I'm telling them to look up the floor. I mean, he's, they haven't been able to contain him, get him the ball in space, let him either create or, or look up the floor, he makes good decisions. You got the lead in the ball, you can't lose. If so just don't turn it over. If you're North Dome said, how quick do you foul here once they pass half court? Do you go, give them a good 15, 20 seconds? I think what you got to foul right away. Yeah, you you got to make this game as long as possible. Absolutely. Here we you go. You got to foul right away. All right. Foul the right guy, though. Keonis has it. There you go. And there it is. Yeah. So yeah, you got to make this game as long as possible now. All right, here we go. 58 51, Keonis to the line. And I believe nine fouls gets the two foul shots, right? One more, one more. Please. Double bonus is double digits, okay. Yeah. If I'm if I'm Coach Frollo, I'm asking the rest why it's nine fouls to one right now. Yeah, that's what it's I would be asking. It's a pretty physical game. Too. Why hasn't Valley Forge committed more than one foul in the second half? And the way Valley Forge has been going after the yes. ball and double teaming everybody. Only no good foul. again. Another missed foul shot. Sledge! There you go. Yeah, that might be it right there. There's the, the first dagger, time all night. First time all night, Sledge does what he can do. Yeah. 
It was just a matter of time he was going to put one in, Vince. He's been on them boards all day long. The missed foul shot was a huge opportunity, and I believe it was Joe who said it, either Joe or Coach Monster, I think it was Joe who said Valley Forge is getting a lot of offensive rebounds. There you go. Yeah. Now every foul is two shots for Valley Forge from here on in, Vince. That's five on number four for North Homestead, I believe. Uh, Sammy Caps, the backup running back. 55.5 seconds, listening to Vince McKee alongside Ruben Rodriguez, our special guest for the fourth quarter, Joe Smith. Sledge, it's up. It is no good, front of the rim. That's a rebound. And that's the momentum killer that will that will pretty much do it. Trell Marks. And yeah, they're going to have to foul him. Maybe not. Oh, gets it out. Logan Sass. And for the first play. time all night, the referee swallows his whistle. And boy, oh boy. 62-51, Valley Forge leads it. Moontazer has it. Another still by Sledge. Dribbles it off his foot. North Thompson shoots it. Out of bounds. That'll go over to North Thompson. Be careful. Sledge took a hell of a bump there. Now with 29 seconds, you don't want to get anything, anybody hurt. Any crazy technicals. Nothing like that. Yeah. Joe, again, thank you so much. Appreciate it, guys. We were honored again, to be a part of this. Continued success. You guys do a great job. You thank and your whole you. team. We appreciate it. Jared Strong will finish up for the Eagles. 62 to 50. a little while. Nine point game. Hey, there you go. Out of bounds. This should be Eagles ball. I just, I don't understand, Vince. You got a, uh, what is it, a nine point lead with 13.8 seconds to go. And there. you won't back off. There's no reason for a press when you're up by nine points with 10 seconds to go. Yeah, especially when you don't have any wins. I don't think Coach Joe Smith would have done that when no. he was in his time here. No. That will do it. Logan Sass should dribble this out. He will. All right, fans. That will do it on the night. You've been listening to Keon Sports. And the final score tonight is North Homestead falling to Valley Forge, 62 to 53. For Ruben Rodriguez, I'm Vince McKee. Have a good night, everybody. And from Ruben himself, good night, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Valley Forge wins their first game. There's zero is gone. Drive home safe and Happy New Year.